personally and to the East African community? Do you feel we are advancing in line with the vision of the Founding Fathers? And how would you assess the progress made so far in integrating the region? I welcome you, Your Excellency. Uh, Your Excellency, President uh, Samia Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, their Excellencies, the heads of state who are here, the Right Honorable Secretary General, the Honorable Ministers, and ladies and gentlemen. I have written something here in handwriting. It is not yet typed, but it will be typed. We are here to celebrate the 25 years of the revived East African community. This is good. And I congratulate the East Africans for achieving this. <laughs> However, I propose that we also celebrate the more than 1,000 years of trade connectedness of this area. Because when we talk, when we talk of, I was actually thinking what to tell you people, but then God told me that I should tell you this. <laughs> because when you say East African community, 1999, but we have been here for more than 1,000 years. So I would like you, the leaders, the intellectuals, to really broaden your thinking. Now I have used the word trade connectedness of this area. Mark those words. Trade connectedness of this area. The, the area of the East African coast, Pwani, the savannah land of central Tanzania and the Great Lakes. These areas have been connected trade-wise for more than 1,000 years. How do, we, how do we know the connectedness in a trade of these areas? How do we know? What evidence do I have? There are earthworks, trenches, in the Zimbabwe district of Uganda, known as Vigobia Mjenyi. There were ancient earthworks like fortifications uh, in Uganda. They are called Vigobia uh, Mjenyi. Those earthworks were built by the dynasty of the Watrezi, that had united a big chunk of that area for a number of centuries. There was a dynasty which united our area there for a number of centuries. The archaeologists did some excavations and found Nkwanzi. Nkwanzi in our local language, in Swahili, I think you would say Ushanga. 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 Meaning glass beads. Uh, glass beads. They found cattle bones and engusio. Engusio are the broken pottery pieces, pieces of broken uh, clay pots. There are also nearby mounds of ancient cow dung, what we call a mung in our language, the ancient cow dung, heaps. The archaeological items thus recovered were dated to have been used between 900 A.D. and 1350 A.D. These glass beads 
were being used 900 AD up to 1350 AD. Among those items were the glass beads already talked about. Where had these come from at that time? Where did the glass, where did the Ushanga come from? To go 1,000 miles to Uganda. They were not being manufactured in Uganda or anywhere nearby. They came from Mesopot Mesopotamia, present day Iraq, through Pwani coast, Ugogo, Ugogo Dodoma area, Unyamwezi, that is Tabora area, Usukuma, Mwanza, Buzinza, Uzinza huko huko mbele huko baada ya Mwanza Karagwe and eventually to Uganda Therefore there is no doubt that more than a thousand years ago this area was a connected trade area CTA can we introduce that because you, you, you like to use you, you like abbreviations PTA, I don't know what, I don't know. So I have given you now a new one. CTA, Connected Trade Area. Mark you, your excellencies, I'm not using the words free trade area. I will come to that also. FTA. This was not an FTA, it was not a free trade area, but it was a connected trade area. This is because it was, it, was, it was not yet a free trade area. It was not an FTA. This is because some of the greedy chiefs along the trade routes were extorting what they were calling Hongo. Hongo, may I knew Hongo to be like bribery, but when I read the literature, it seems as if they were talking about customs, about taxes. When I say Mahongo, you can, of course here I'm being guided by Huntington Speak and Stanley. They are the ones who wrote about this, so I don't know they were using the word Hongo. Hongo meaning like tax or, for, for him, they wrote Hongo. Uh, Hongo, they, they say Hongo, but what they meant was tax. So these chiefs, well, some of them were extorting a lot of money from the traders, excessively tra taxing the traders. There was a notorious chief in Buzinza, known as what I came to understand as Rusuarura. When you read, I think it is speak understand that they, they write Saurora, Saurora, but it didn't, they were mispronouncing the name. But when I asked one of the Iyara members from Ubuziza, uh, there was an old man in the past, he told me that the name of this chief was Ruswarura of the Bazinza, was very famous for extorting money, extorting, extorting the gifts from traders. The other European travelers had written his name as Uswarora or something like that. He would extort a lot of what they were calling Hongo, that's what they wrote, the Stanley or, or speak, one of them, from the traders. But then there was the giant and the gentle Rumanika of Karagwe, who would, on the other hand, give a lot of gifts and, and assist travelers. Rumanika was very, 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 very generous to the traders and to the, to the travelers. Speak and Stanley wrote with a lot of praises about Rumanika, the king of Karagu. Therefore, our area was a connected trade area, but not a free trade area. 
through Pwani would get through cost. Pwani is cost. Through Pwani would get Nkwanzi, glass beads, emienda, textiles, guns and gunpowder, etc. Out of the Congo forest would get a miringa. That is a brass or copper bracelets. They are called a miringa in our, in our language. Engoro. Those are ivory bangles, ivory bangles. Bangles made out of, 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 of ivory. Enyerere. Enyerere, they are one by women, they are, they are iron, iron coils, one on the legs by women. In fact, when Mwarimu's name first came in the news, 1950s, they were saying, Nyerere, ah, we said this is, we thought it meant that in our area, but later on we, we were told it meant something slightly different. Amoshe, giraffe hair, hair, neck wear. From Buhaya, from the Bukova area, we would get, um, our area would get a, a toma, back cloth. From Bunyoro, we would get Omonyo, rock salt. Our ignorant chiefs kept that under utilization of our opportunities for all that time until the Europeans came and captured them. Because this area was connected trade-wise, but our chiefs never used it to, to consolidate it, so the Europeans came and captured, captured the area. Now the Europeans first came to the East African coast in the persons of Vasco da Gama, in 1498. Then they disconnected our connected trade area when they colonized the region and fragmented it among the English, Kenya, and Uganda, the Germans, Tanganyika, Rwanda, and Burundi, Belgians, Congo, the British, and the Egyptian South Sudan. So when these foreigners came, because of our internal weaknesses, now what was a CTA became a DTA, a disconnected trade area. <laughs> Thereafter, our CTA, connected trade area, became a DTA, disconnected trade area. This was the fault of the chiefs. This definitely was the fault of our chiefs. Vasco da Gama came here in 1498. That is when the first white man came to, to the East African coast, signaling a possible new danger to us. And that's how they were called Wazungu. Because I think they were asked, what are you looking for? To Nazunguka. They just said they are going around. Uh, they were going around. Uh, was now, Vasco da Gama came here in 1498. The Berlin Congress that partitioned Africa into, into colonies took place in 1884-85. This is a whole 386 years of our wonderful chiefs watching the danger coming and doing nothing about it. This is just the history. It is therefore most commendable that our leaders, Mze Jomo Kenyatta, Marium Julius Nyerere and Dr. Bote, as soon as we got out of the nightmare of colonialism, took the bold step of the decision to form the political federation of East Africa 
on the 3rd of June 1963, which is what my daughter, the Secretary General, was talking about. I have already given Her Excellency that picture, and I, I have also given to His Excellency Ruto. They, they already, I, I've given all the President, even President Kagame, I gave him the picture, that picture of the 3rd of June, 1963. But now I have some copies I want to give to Secretary General again and to Yara and to Secretariat. I think I don't know whether they are the same secretaries. <laughs> and and then to the trade the East African Council, Trade Council. Are you are there traders here? Okay. Bring my, my pictures. I have already given those, the, those pictures to the excellencies, the presidents. Unfortunately, some actors let us down and did not follow up that decision of forming the political federation in 1963. I'm glad Tanganyika and Zanzibar moved ahead and formed Tanzania that has played a very, a very unique role in the liberation of Southern Africa, as well as the fight against Idi Amin in Uganda. Because remember, Mungano, Watanganyika na Zanzibar was 1964. That was after Marimu and Mzee Karumi noticed the hesitation by Obote and Kenyatta. That's how Marimu and, and, and Sheikh Abed said, Watch a train in Because in the 1963 meeting, Zanzibaris, Zanzibaris were not yet independent. I don't think they were, in, I don't think in, Zanzibar was independent by, by 1963. Even Kenya was not yet independent, but they were coming to independence. I think Zanzibar got in 1964. Uh -huh. 63? 63. 63. Okay. When we didn't want that independence, we did revolution. Okay. So, the, when, when Mr. Obote and, and Mr. Kenyatta hesitated, Tanganyika and Zanzibar went ahead and 